Thank you, Mr. President. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I wish to extend my sincere congratulations to you and your country, Hungary, on your election as President of the United Nations General Assembly at its 77th session. I am certain that this August body will benefit greatly from the wealth of knowledge and experience from your illustrious career in the diplomatic service, including your term here in New York as Hungary's permanent representative, where you co-chaired the intergovernmental process and ushered in the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals. Mr. President, I must particularly express gratitude to the outgoing President for his close coordination and collaboration with other principal organs, particularly the Economic and Social Council, which Botswana was honored to lead as its 77th President. I am delighted that the two Presidents worked very cooperatively on addressing vaccine equity, the sustainable development of Africa, financing for sustainable recovery and the nexus between natural resources and sustainable development, among other priorities. Close collaboration among UN principal organs of the United Nations is beneficial and must be promoted. Mr. President, Botswana endorses your choice of the theme for this session, that is, a watershed moment, transformative solutions to interlocking challenges. We concur with your observation that the current global challenges, namely the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine, humanitarian challenges, and climate change are complex and interconnected, hence require transformative solutions. Given the interconnectedness of these challenges, it is evident that they can only be effectively addressed in a holistic approach. This further demonstrates the enduring relevance of the United Nations Charter, which 77 years ago established the three founding pillars of the UN system, namely human rights, peace and security, and development as interrelated and mutually reinforcing. As UN member states, we should look no further for these solutions than in the already existing key multilateral frameworks, among these the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its SDGs, the Paris Agreement and the UN's 75th Anniversary Declaration, as well as the outcomes of major UN meetings. This session gives us an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to these solutions. In his comprehensive report on our common agenda, the Secretary General has offered us a boost with concrete ideas and recommendations to accelerate implementation of the 2030 Agenda and close the existing gaps in our multilateral frameworks. Mr. President, I wish, therefore, to preface my remarks through which I will share my country's progress in recovering from the COVID-19 and towards a transformative and sustainable development by reminding this auspicious body of Botswana's road to development. Many in this room may only know the Botswana of now, which is an upper middle income country. This is a status that we are proud of, given that when we attained our independence, only 56 years ago, we were among the poorest in the world. However, we were fortunate to discover what has turned out to be the world's largest diamond reserve across the Kimberley Belt. For those less acquainted with the development path we've traveled as a country, this is not the entire reflection of the Botswana story. Our story is based on the humanity, the principle and tenacity that we have as a people, as Botswana. It is a story of the wisdom of our forefathers who avoided the misfortune that often accompanied the discovery and exploitation of minerals in other parts of the world, and electing instead to turn the discovery of diamonds into a story for development. Botswana as a nation would never have been able to realize this development had we not held firmly to our belief in the principles of democracy centered on the rule of law, good governance, and the protection and enjoyment of basic human rights by our people. Mr. President, I must, however, admit that we face an uphill battle in our investment efforts to attract investors to help us diversify our economy away from dependence on diamonds. I stood before this General Assembly and I've engaged a different fora when the opportunity arises to share the Botswana story with a view to encouraging partnerships 
to augment our efforts towards diversification. I trust that those that are attentive to our call are more in number, and I firmly believe that they too aspire to share a part of our story. In the meantime, diamonds are still the bedrock of our economy. It is in this respect that the words of the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and the call for, and the call for a common agenda resonates with me. I liked in particular the call by the Secretary General for a global view whereby power, wealth, and opportunity are shared more broadly and fairly at the international level. For my country, this translates into a fair and equitable opportunity to use the resources that we have to develop our people and give them an equal opportunity to contribute and share in global wealth. As we continue to advocate for the Kimberley process, I wish to remind this August body that Botswana's story is unquestionable proof and living testimony that diamonds with good governance are for development. In fact, diamonds are a serious matter of livelihoods. I'll be hosting a side event on diamonds for development later this evening, through which I hope to further broaden conversations and allow our partners, both within the United Nations, governments, civil society, and the private sector, to join us in ensuring that my country, Botswana, will also be part of the United Nations family espoused around shared power, wealth, and opportunity as we endeavor to realize the 2030 agenda. Mr. President, despite our challenges, my government continues to play its part to contribute to the international agenda and in ensuring that access to medicines by our people is part and parcel of their health care, while ensuring that the economy also recovers from the pandemic. Vaccine rollout remains a precondition for a sustainable recovery, yet many countries in the global south, especially Africa, have not met the WHO's target of 70% of their populations being fully vaccinated by mid-2022. This underscores the urgent need to continue promoting vaccine equity through international solidarity, as well as addressing vaccine hesitancy by countering disinformation and raising awareness about the science-backed facts regarding the effectiveness and safety of the vaccines. Despite the challenges we encountered, which were common to many developing countries, Botswana has procured enough vaccines to administer to all eligible groups, thus enabling significant progress with 64% of our population now fully vaccinated. However, much more needs to be done. It is in this context that Botswana continues to play an active role on this matter and recently also joined other member states in co-sponsoring the General Assembly resolution calling for the convening of a high-level meeting on pandemic prevention, preparedness and response during the 78th session of the General Assembly. We also continue to actively participate in the ongoing process towards a possible elaboration of a pandemic treaty at the World Health Organization in Geneva. We believe that such a legally binding instrument will strengthen existing global mechanisms to address and react more speedily to health emergencies. Mr. President, I am pleased to inform you that as part of overcoming the challenges of global vaccine inequity and in line with our commitment to build back better and in a transformative manner, the government of Botswana has approved the manufacturing of the patent-free Corbevax COVID-19 vaccine and the construction of a vaccine manufacturing plant has already commenced. Additionally, the facility will produce cancer treatment and next generation cell-based immunotherapy. This initiative is being undertaken in partnership with Nantworks, the Texas and Texas Children's Hospital Center for Vaccine Development and the Baylor College of Medicine. This partnership will enhance Botswana's capacity in human vaccine production, contribute to our goal of building a knowledge-based economy and help in preparations for future pandemics. Botswana's recovery plans include strengthening the country's vast social protection system to ensure the inclusivity of vulnerable groups, persons living with disabilities, which will go a long way in facilitating equal enjoyment of their rights while broadening the accountability framework as we recently acceded to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. 
In this regard, my government has set a medium to long-term economic recovery and transformation plan intended to fast-track recovery efforts while advancing the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and its goals. In order to achieve sustainable development, adequate financing is needed for the success of our recovery efforts from the pandemic and acceleration of implementation of the 2030 Agenda during this decade of action. Effective mobilization of domestic and international financial resources, as well as their prudent utilization, is therefore imperative. I therefore reiterate calls for development partners to scale up and fulfill our official development assistance commitments and our efforts in attaining long-term development sustainability. Mr. President, in addition to international funding, it should be noted that transformative agendas require the effective implementation by governments and associated stakeholders as well as a sense of ownership by all stakeholders and a buy-in from the people we serve. This decisive moment of the myriad of challenges we face demands that we challenge ourselves even more. My government has thus initiated the Reset Agenda, inspired by the need for collective, inclusive and coordinated efforts towards the transformative agenda. We are accelerating digitization in the delivery of services driven by innovation and creativity. Our people are responding to the technology-driven solutions, and they too are demonstrating the reorientation of their disposition, as well as conceptual agility and to venture into new frontiers of doing things differently. A full embrace of this mindset change is an inspirational approach to effective implementation of government policies, programs, projects, and business activities, and indeed, the Sustainable Development Goals. The realization of transformative solutions to the current social and economic challenges will require solidarity, both within and between countries. As chair of the landlocked developing countries, many of whom are also characterized as least developed and small states, Botswana expresses solidarity with fellow UN member states in special situations, particularly the distinct and peculiar challenges faced by the LDCs and SIDSs in their efforts to build back better and recover sustainably from the pandemic. In line with the repeated position of our sub-regional body, SADC, I also wish to express solidarity with our northeastern neighbor, Zimbabwe, and call for the removal of unilateral coercive measures targeted at that country. While we are confident of the resilience and resolve of Zimbabwe, as well as its economic transformation prospects, we are concerned that such measures are not advancing the cause of livelihoods of innocent Zimbabweans, nor the cause of our SDGs. Mr. President, this year we continue to witness extreme weather events that point to the escalating severity of the climate crisis. Decisive implementation of the bold climate action spelled out in the Paris Agreement and the Glasgow Climate Pact is therefore needed to prevent the worst implications. Botswana remains committed to our 15% carbon emission reduction target by 2030, as indicated in our nationally determined contributions and reconfirmed in our climate change policy adopted in 2021. The policy addresses access to climate finance, clean technologies, and renewable energy. Climate ambitions will not translate into climate action in developing countries if they remain inadequately fun funded. We are therefore pleased that new financial pledges to support adaptation in developing countries were made at COP26 in Glasgow, the United Kingdom. It is our hope that these commitments will be fulfilled expeditiously in order to enable accelerated implementation, particularly in Africa, a region that contributes minimally to climate change but is regrettably the most affected. In this context, we are optimistic that COP27 to be held in Sharm Sham Lake in Egypt on African soil will further inspire ambitious climate action and deliver more adaptation resources for Africa and other vulnerable regions. Drawing on this inspiration, Botswana, in collaboration with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and various stakeholders, convened the Climate Adaptation Week 2022 from 22nd to 26th August 2022 in Khabaroni under the theme transformations in advancing the formulations and implementation of national adaptation plans. The Expo succeeded in promoting the exchange of experiences and fostering partnerships between a wide range of actors and stakeholders on how to advance national adaptation plans. 
On 2nd March this year, Botswana was among the 141 member states that voted in favor of the General Assembly resolution which demanded an end to the invasion of Ukraine. With that vote, we were reaffirming the purpose and principles of the UN Charter, particularly its articles, Articles 1 and 2, which underscore the need for peaceful settlement of disputes, as well as respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity. The Charter is a binding instrument of international law. Therefore, all peace-loving nations ought to adhere to its letter and spirit under all circumstances. We therefore continue to call on all parties to recommit to finding peaceful and lasting solutions to the conflict through diplomacy and dialogue. The UN broker, broker talks that resulted in the Russian Federation and Ukraine signing an agreement on the Black Sea Grain Initiative are a testament that when given a chance, diplomacy and dialogue can yield results. If nothing else, the end of the Second World War and the founding of the United Nations in 1945 has demonstrated that only if we approach conflict based on solidarity and working together can we find peace. I commend the SG and the UN system, organizations, Turkey and other stakeholders, including neighboring countries such as Poland, for rising to the challenges to address humanitarian needs in Ukraine and other crisis situations. As we continue to seek amicable redress of this worrying conflict, it is important that the UN system be particularly adequately resourced given its critical work of saving lives and alleviating the suffering of victims of armed conflict, climate change, and other disasters. We, the collective member states of the United Nations, have the responsibility and mandate to strengthen international law, promote human rights and gender equality, and most crucial, to protect civilians in challenging peacekeeping environments. In this context, Botswana shares the same ideals with many of you present here today on the principle of responsibility to protect. Mr. President, as already been acknowledged by the 2005 World Summit, states have the primary responsibility to protect their own populations from genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. As part of the group of Friends on Responsibility to Protect, Botswana is co-chair together with Costa Rica and Denmark, will continue to ensure that the membership of the United Nations pays attention to this important responsibility to reinforce global action. In Southern Africa, we remain actively engaged through our sub-regional organization, SADC, in addressing the threat posed by terrorism and violent extremism to peace and security in our sub-region. To this end, SADC has deployed its security forces to thwart terrorist threats in the Cabo Delgado province of Mozambique. The UN response to today's crisis is a clear demonstration of its indispensability as the foremost organization in addressing global issues. From its system-wide response to COVID-19 to its swift action in relation to the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine and other crisis situations, the UN has proven to be fit for purpose. Nonetheless, there remains ample room for improving the organization's effectiveness in fulfilling the principles and purpose of the UN Charter. In this connection, we welcome recent reforms and proposals aimed at strengthening the UN system and enhancing its relevance in addressing contemporary challenges. These efforts include SG's development management, peace and security, human rights, and humanitarian pillar reforms, which are aimed at enhancing the Secretariat's ability, agility, accountability, and effectiveness in mandate implementation. Mr. President, for a small country like mine, the reform of the United Nations is important only in as far as to ensure the equal voice of member states, regardless of size. My government and I personally are therefore eager to have our own people represented and employed within the UN system. With our presidency of the ECOSOC, I believe Botswana has demonstrated its ability, including the capacity of our youth who have received positive reviews from their support to the ECOSOC Secretariat during our tenure. We are, however, eager to see such accolades turning into real opportunities for absorption throughout the employ and hierarchy of the organization, particularly for our youth. As I conclude my remarks, Mr. President, let me reassure you that you can count on Botswana's support and constructive engagement towards a successful implementation of the program of work of the 77th session of the General Assembly. I hope that Botswana can also rely on the UN system and our development partners and the wider international community 
to help us realize the Agenda 2030 and transform our people and country into a developed nation by 2036. I thank you. Um, <clears throat> on behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Botswana for the statement just made.